How's it going, beautiful people? This is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got my Starbucks ready. Mm. I hope everybody is doing super awesome on 2000. Uh, I've been working on some... Uh, some uh, personal growth, I think. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm working on some personal growth. And I've noticed that it's just such a such an important thing for me to do. I've been uh, just doing some grow, just doing some growing. I think I think it's it's no longer growing pains uh, necessarily. Uh, it's more like, man, what's going on? You know, like there's stuff to do. There's stuff that is very important uh, career-wise. And what does that mean? So let me give you a little let me let me give you a little a little backstory on this. For the past six years and a half, I've been a, a full time artist. But yeah, yeah, there's a but, right? Uh, it's been awesome. It's been such an awesome ride. It's such a cool thing. I never really imagined it was going to happen that way when it first happened. Uh, because. Myself, like many other artists, I've been thinking about being a, 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 a career artist since I was a kid, right? I just never saw how it was going to happen. Uh, I, had, I had ideas or whatnot, but I, I never had any... I didn't have the real data, right? I didn't have the real data to figure out how that was going to happen. So when it happened, I was like, oh man, that's, this is awesome. I'm so grateful. It's the coolest thing ever. You know, imagine waking up every morning... And and going to work creating your, your artwork, what you love most. You know, going there and creating your artwork. And I know a lot of people do that. Um, I hear from a lot of people that they do that. Uh, I'm a married guy. I have a, I have a, I have a 10-year-old son. And for me, it wasn't just, it wasn't just doing that. It wasn't just uh, making a living as an artist. It was I needed to I needed to take care of my family. So it wasn't it wasn't I'm gonna make some extra cash. It was like no, I, I have to take care of my family. It can't be some extra cash. It can't be uh, a side thing. It can't be a side gig. So so it was really cool, right? I started I started. Uh, Selling artwork, getting my work out into the marketplace, and right away before I knew it, it, it didn't go beyond the year when I started making over six figures a year. The thing is that it was so cool that I wanted to protect it. I didn't want it to go away. Now this is data that that nobody teaches you guys, or if they do, it's it's probably some uh, some entrepreneur. But usually artists don't teach this kind of stuff. The first year I began working as a as a as a self-employed artist, I I was selling my work and I made and I made over six figures income, right? I don't know if it was a I don't know, but it was it was it was it was substantial for me, right? Because I had I hadn't done that in any other job and I hadn't done that much less creating artwork. Uh and the way I saw it was, this is so awesome. How can I protect this? How can I keep it going? And what happens is that when you go into protection mode, you stop growing. Because now you're contracting. Okay? You're contracting. When you go into protection mode, what happens is that you start contracting. And when you start contracting, you can't grow. You can't grow. So no matter how much... Uh, you love what you're doing, how much you want to keep it going, sooner than later, more, soon, more sooner than later, you're going to start realizing that you've hit a wall or a ceiling. You become stagnant. 
You become stagnant. You, you stop growing because now you're in conservation mode. You're, in, you're, you're contracting. You just don't know that you are. Uh, it's like one of my mentors said, and I know I'm talking about I'm talking about money here. A lot of people hate that topic. Uh, I don't know why. I never hated it. Uh, not I, I don't ever remember hating it, but I know a lot of people do. And I think as an artist, it's such an important topic because if if you don't get that handle, then it's very difficult to continue to create artwork. As a full-time artist, as a, as a as a small business or as a full-time artist, it's very difficult. Uh, you're gonna have to have another career or something else, and then and then you could have that as a side as a side gig, as a side hustle, whatever. You know, uh, you're like I'm an I'm an artist, but I don't live from this. I live from something else. That's me, like saying I like guitar, right? I'm I'm an artist, but I like guitar. I like playing guitar. Uh, I love everything about a guitar, but I I wouldn't know how to create income from a guitar and it's such an important thing it's just that most people just don't like talking about it it's it's i think it's a cultural thing i don't know uh one of my mentors is always talking about it right because that's his gig his gig is business he's always talking about uh, income and all that kind of stuff and when i heard him talk about income uh from 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 that point of view i was like oh man i totally get it like this guy's talking about what all artists in my position need, which is the generation of income. And he said something very, 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 uh, very important. He said, look, if you don't continue to create more income, you're going to start conserving, saving, trying to save. You're not going to want to buy Starbucks because you're going to think Starbucks is your problem and on and on and on. You know, now I don't know shit about money, right? That's not my gig. My gig is selling artwork. Uh, my gig is creating artwork, but I don't. I'm not like, like I'm not the guy to talk about money because because I don't understand it. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have it. You know, I'm not an entrepreneur like that. I'm not a business guy like that. I just took the information from this mentor and I applied it into my into my art business, and that's when it started making sense for me. So he said, if, if, you're not, if you don't continue to go after and sell more work and expand, you, are, you can only do two things, okay? You expand and you, and you contract. There's no such thing as stagnant. Stagnant is a very small segment of it. You remain stagnant, very little, and then all of a sudden, you don't remain stagnant for a long time. You, you remain stagnant for very little. And then you start contracting. Because there's no more, there's no more coming in, right? So, so he talks about that. He's like, you're, 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 you're not gonna want to buy Starbucks because you're gonna be like, oh my god, like if I spend, I don't know, two Starbucks a day, that's three hundred dollars a month. Oh, that's so crazy. I would never do that. It, no, you wouldn't do that if you don't go get another extra, three hundred or two k or five k or ten k a month. You wouldn't do that, right? It, so in art is the same thing. Now he, his gig, I'm not I'm not trying to be that guy. Okay, I'm just. Just bear with me. I'm trying to express his gig is income because he's a business guy. My gig is art. But once I started applying that into art, into my, my the business of being an artist, which by the way, it's probably the same thing. I just don't have authority on it like, like any of these guys do. I have authority on creating artwork. I know what I'm doing when I create artwork. And I have a handle on selling it. I haven't scaled it. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Look. If you're not scaling, if you're not growing, you're contracting. And for the longest time, I wanted to to preserve my 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 income. I wanted to preserve it. I'm not talking about saving necessarily. I wanted to continue it to stay the same. I wasn't thinking how can I grow it, right? It crossed my mind and and I cared about it. But for about two years, all I thought about is how can I keep it going? How can I maintain it and keep it going? It was well over two years. It was almost you know two and a half, somewhere around there. That's all I thought about. And that prevented me from going and growing, which growing is the best, is the most important part of any business. I know there's a lot of people out there that talk about um, 
lifestyle business, you know, as an artist or whatever, you go and you go to a, I don't know, you find something that works online and then you, you live in the, I don't know, in Costa Rica or, or, or somewhere in the Philippines or I don't know, you live somewhere where you find paradise somewhere and then you work from there and that's cool and I know that a handful of people have done it. That's not everybody though and I don't trust that, that gig because... Well, there's many reasons, but the, the main one is that many times when that happens, people are less resting in their laurels and not and not continue to to expand. And this happened to me. This is why I'm talking to you about this. Look, if you're not expanding, you're contracting. I rested on my laurels and I started paying the price. And granted, I wasn't doing something wrong, right? But if but but if you don't have the right data, you may think you 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 may think that everything's fine. And all you're really doing is taking steps back, right? So after those two and a half years or so, I started thinking about, well, how can I grow? And and I started thinking about growth, right? But I had no idea the amount of energy required to grow something, much less to grow a, a an art business, to grow a... a to be a, an entrepreneur, to really play the entrepreneur, not a solopreneur thing, which is one of those things that everybody's trying to go after, the the playing the solo game. Just think about these numbers. It's 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 uh, statistically about eighty percent of solopreneurs. Uh, solopreneurs is that you 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 you're solo, right? It's just one. Uh, you and your wife, you and your partner. I don't know. Just one of you, right? It's two, but it's one. You don't have employees, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, about 80% of this, 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 the small businesses that are solopreneurs don't make profit. Just think of that for a second, okay? Don't make profit. There's a problem in not expanding. Now, well, I understand that a lot of people are afraid of expanding because now you, every time you expand, you encounter new problems. Every expansion requires requires a new you, like Leonardo DiCaprio says, right? Every every time you encounter something new, right, a new goal is going to require you a new you. It, you can't solve it with the old you. Uh, Einstein said that I think too, right? You can't you can't solve the problem with the way of thinking you got into the problem in the first place. It's got to be a new a new angle. It's got to be a new you. Right, a new vision, a new a new perspective. So, in being an entrepreneur, a business uh, uh, artist, whatever you call yourself, doing it alone, guys, you're you're just hurting yourself, and 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 you may not realize that now, but as time goes by, you start realizing that you've underestimated the amount of effort required, the amount of people, the amount of artwork you need to create. The amount of materials you need to buy, the amount of reach, the amount of marketing, it's all underestimated because we're trying to keep it small. See, what we're trying to do, I know because I did this for, for the past six years, what we're trying to do is conserve. We're trying to outsmart the situation is really what we're trying to do. It's a very tempting, uh, beautiful, romantic notion how can I create artwork and I'm going to go live in, in Paris and, and, and drive my business from online. And I don't know uh, if I just sell, you know, a couple of paintings a day at this price point, it's going to be great. It is until it's not. It is great for a few months. It is great for until you start realizing that the expenses keep changing, that things change, that the algorithm on Instagram or Facebook changes, that, the, that they're charging more now for, 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 uh, Google AdWords, that what worked two years ago doesn't work today. It starts changing. So I'm not trying to be bare or bad news or anything. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying, what I'm trying to state here, look, guys, expand. Continue to expand. I mean, just look, look at the universe, you know. I mean, we, we all understand from the uh, scientists, you know, that the universe keeps expanding, expanding, right? Look at flowers, right? They expand. It's an expansion. Everything that contracts, it's ready to die. The only thing that we want, I, I believe, as human beings, the only thing that we want to contract is our ego. The only thing that we want to die is our ego. Other than that, you want to continue expanding. 
You want to grow, you want to expand, you want your awareness to grow. You want your, your knowledge, your experiences, and your business to grow. Your art business. If you are afraid of spending uh, a little bit of money on Facebook ads because you don't know what the effing ROI is, what's your return on investment, how, mu how many paintings are you going to sell if you spent, uh, I don't know, $20 on, on, on Facebook ads, uh, but y'all are art dealer says thanks. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thank you. If you're afraid of that, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. If you're afraid of, of how much you're going to, I, I, I don't know, like ads, Facebook ads are like five bucks, you know, like anyone can start a campaign with like five bucks a day. If you're afraid of spending that every day, you know, because th this is five bucks, you know, I don't know, like four or five bucks. I don't know. Facebook ad is five bucks, right? Facebook ad for a day. You can start a campaign for like five bucks a day. If you're afraid of spending that every day, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Like if people, if people don't know you and they don't hear about you, you're not expanding guys. Like it, it doesn't matter how much you blog. It doesn't matter how much. How many YouTube followers you have? That that's all great. All of that stuff is great. I mean, it's 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 amazing, right? That you have a, a lot of Instagram followers that are YouTube followers. The thing is that those things change. You know, remember MySpace? Like those things change. They're 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 always changing. So you you could be like the 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 the, the Instagram god or goddess right now, and. Who's to say, you know, four or five years from now, it's no longer that. And if you didn't, and if you didn't morph into the next bandwagon, and you didn't continue to expand, it's it's not, it, you know, you're you're gonna you're gonna find yourself in in a situation where you're like, oh shit, man, I thought, I thought I had made it because I found a way to create, uh, I don't know. Uh, traffic or revenue through Instagram or through YouTube or through Facebook. And and what I realized is, dude, you got to use them all. You got to use them all and you got to be aggressive with all. And now, now not, you're not going to hit them all probably, right? You're not going to, maybe you're going to do great on Instagram. Maybe you're going to do great on YouTube and maybe not Facebook or whatever. You're not going to hit them all. Like you're not going to win high on all of them. More than likely, you're gonna you're gonna pick one that you're really, you know, you can deposit your energy on. But don't stop doing the rest of them. Don't stop doing LinkedIn. I mean, look at any of the people that are that are actually winning at the game. And when I mean winning at the game, again, I'm gonna take it back. Okay, this is I'm gonna take a steps a couple steps back. I mean, winning at the game. I'm talking about business, art. Okay, selling artwork and 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 and. Uh, Thriving in their success, their careers. I'm not talking about you finding peace. You don't have to do any of this if you want peace. All you have to do is just, I don't know, meditate, pray, or whatever, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about happiness and, and, and peace here and being Zen. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, there's certainly a room for that. And it's probably the most important thing in your life. But you need to eat too. You need to sell your work. You need to expand. And that's what I'm talking about here. So some people are like, all of that stuff is not going to make you happy or achieving career success and, and monetary success. It's not going to make you happy. Of course it's not. Like who the hell is saying it is? You know, none of that stuff makes you happy. But it doesn't make you miserable either. It, it's two different conversations. You know, if I have a million bucks right now, like, you know, if I'm like, oh my God, you know, I don't know, up to 10 million, whatever, something substantial, no? If I had $10 million right now... Uh, to for my career or whatever and if I was pissed off I'd still be the same pissed off person it doesn't change it it doesn't change it it's, it's two conversations it's two different conversations but but you know I, I'll tell you something if I was going to be pissed off anyways I, I'd rather have the 10 million than not <laughs> if I was going to be pissed off anyways right so so it's two different conversations so that's why I'm always talking about artists. I'm always talking to artists. Look, guys, you guys, you guys, we 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 have to grow the revenue in art. The top line revenue, it's the most important. The top line 
is the most important. How much is coming in. Like, don't worry so much about how much is going out. That's not even, you know, it's not even the thing. I found that the most important thing is how much is coming in. How much is coming in is the most important thing. Uh... What's going out, it's, it's, it's mini school. It's mini, I, I know so many people like complain about eBay fees. I've recently, I've been recently uh, uh, talking to, to uh, the, the people in charge of the art department on eBay, right? Uh, they, they contacted me. Uh, like a super awesome conversation we had about, about artwork and all of that stuff, right? Uh, this person takes care of all of the art the department of art on eBay. Um, and I was expressing to this person about how artists complain about the fees. You know, they complain about the fees. And I was thinking about that and, and it just made me realize in that moment, right? It made me realize again, like, I can't believe how many artists complain about the eBay fees. It's the traffic that matters the most. It's the income. Like, I'll gladly pay eBay 200k a month if I'm making I don't know if I'm making 2 million I'd gladly pay 200k a month right if I'm making if I'm making 2 million a month I'd, my god I'd, I'd, I'd be so happy sending 200k like the, the fee is not the important thing it's the it's it's the it's the generating is the generation of income that is the most important is the top line so when I talk to artists about selling their work Many artists get afraid of. Well, should I should I do uh, marketing? The, the the problem here is not it's not should I do marketing. If you don't do marketing, nothing's going to happen. You know, should I do uh, Facebook ads? You should spend every dime. You know, that you have allocated for marketing on that. It, like it's now, like do you right? I'm not gonna tell you like do this, do that. No, do you. But I am telling you, look, you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you're not marketing, pushing, getting the product out into the market, getting it into the hands of people that love what you do. Because there, they are, as Seth Godin says, uh, one of my favorite authors is uh, Seth Godin, the purple cow guy. They are your sneezers. People that love right they, they are your sneezers they they're contagious right they con they, they 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 tell other people he calls them sneezers the people that 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 receive my artwork and they say oh my god i love your painting these are the people that go and talk to another hundred people at least in their lifetime you know at least another hundred people another thousand people who knows maybe five thousand who knows what it is i don't know i don't know the roi i don't think anybody does and that's the fear what I mean by ROI, for those of you who don't understand, is the return on investment. MG uh, Calvin says, very nice thing. Laura uh, Ely Fine Art Studio says, how much should you allocate to marketing? I, th I think that whatever you do, your, whatever you do to marketing, is, it's not enough. Marketing is the single most important thing. I, it, it, you should leave it up to your to your heart how much, but if I know I'm not doing enough and and I allocate about twenty percent and twenty percent I know I've been told by my by my mentor you're not doing enough you're not doing enough like twenty percent of 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 the income goes to 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 marketing and I know I'm not doing enough because because so much of it see every time that you spend on marketing. You're essentially multiplying yourself. You're canning and multiplying yourself. I learned this from a, from a, a marketing uh, coach. His name is uh, Joe Polish. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, he he's the one who coined the phrase "canning and cloning yourself." Right? Uh, if you do phones and you hire you know another person to help you call outbound calls, you you can then clone yourself now, right? Now there's two of you. If you get 10, you clone yourself to 10 of you. So the amount of, of, uh, of money into marketing, I think it should be, it should be as much as you can, as, as much as you can get away with, as much as you can let go. Uh, it's the single most important thing. 
the acquisition of its its revenue. Now, when when I say marketing, guys, now I'm not I'm not just talking about like spending, right? It's not just spending. It's sweat equity. The most important equity you have is sweat equity. When you start generating income, then you can then you can start using income to expand yourself even further, right? But in the beginning, what, what you need the most is putting in time, putting in energy. Sweat equity, it's it's like it's the most important thing, especially in the beginning and on, but especially in the beginning, it's the most important thing because what happens is that we think, oh, I don't have money to put into my art marketing. So therefore, you know, we hear all this all these old antiquated phrases like it takes money to make money. Uh, no, it doesn't work like that. It, from what I understand, what I've seen and what I've done, it takes, it takes money to make more money, to make more, but not to make it. It takes money to make more. It helps. Actually, I wouldn't even say it takes, it helps to make more. It helps tremendously, right? Because now you're talking about investment. Now you're talking about substantial investments. Now I'm talking about, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go in and get myself 10 people to work in my studio. You know, it helped me package the work while I create artwork and then I go get more opportunity. So that's going to take, uh, it's an investment, right? But in the beginning, your energy, your time, your efforts are the single most important thing. That it's like, it's like, it's the thing that you have. It's your resource. It's the most valuable resource yourself your time you, you can do so much in a day if you cut all the bs out of out of your day let's say that you only have four hours to work on your art career okay i don't know you have your you're married uh or whatever right you have your partner you live with your partner you have maybe children you are you have a a, a daytime job and then you come back home and you have four hours four sacred hours that you're like Man, if I just, if I don't watch TV for an hour, if I don't go in and go into the bar for another two hours or whatever, uh, I have four hours to work on my, on my artwork and my art career. If that's what you got, and by the way, le letting go of your job, it's not the thing to do. Many artists are like, I can't wait to let go of my day job. That's, that's like suicide. Your, your, your daytime job is the most important thing you have. Regardless of what it is, whether you're an accountant or you're flipping burgers, you want to keep that. You want to keep that until until you can't keep it anymore. You want to keep that for forever if you have to. Until you don't have, until you just, until now it's time to trade it in. Right? Because, because time, because later on, time becomes the most important thing. In the beginning is effort. Time is all you got. Right? And later, as you're getting in income, you have to trade it. You're gonna have to trade your. You're gonna have to trade whatever you have for time because now you, now you you're gonna need time. In the beginning, you either have two things: you either have income, right, or you have time. Those are the two resources m most people have. It's income and time, income or time. If 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 you're an artist who's broke, okay, and I don't mean this poor. I'm not saying poor. I'm saying broke. Okay, no, but I don't I don't I don't think that that it's the right mentality. To, to to have a a, a poor mindset, it, it, broke it just means that there there it's not there it's not visual it's not visible, but you're but you're not poor. Uh, if you have, if you if you if you're an artist who's starting out, you have one or the other. You either you you either don't have income, and you have a lot of time, or you have a lot of time, right? You're, or you have a lot of income. I'm sorry, no time. Either one. I hope I made any sense. Uh, later on in your career, as you're progressing, you're going to find out that you need more time. Time is what you're going to start needing more, right? So what you're going to start doing is you're going to start, you're going to start cloning yourself in different ways. Instead of posting stuff on social media, you're going to start using, uh, doing it manually, which is going to take you, I don't know, let's say that you have four hours. What I would suggest is, is, is spend 15 minutes, no more than 15 minutes, and go as hard as you can for 15 minutes on any endeavor. You know, and if you have to create artwork for at least an hour, then spend that 
no, don't have the phone in there, don't be checking messages, nothing. Spend a full hour just creating artwork. You have three hours left. Spend, spend half an hour social media in all the social media platforms, 15 minutes uh, in one, 15 minutes in another one, 10 minutes in one, 10 minutes in another one. Even if the first time you do it, it's only to create your profile. The killer is spending too much time on something. That's always the killer. Because you don't have that time, that kind of time, right? You're now you're you're crunched in time, so you have to move as fast as hard, and touch as many things as possible. And now you have, let's say, you have two hours left. I don't know. Use one of those two hours to everything that you do. At least one hour. You're gonna find out the superpower, the 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 the, the amazing thing about time is that it's deep. Time is not linear. Time is deep. Where most people are like, man, I got an hour to do this. Uh, yeah, and then, but if you really go in, you might only do it in like two minutes or five minutes. How many times have we done this? We procrastinate. We're like, oh my God, I have to do that. I have to do that. I have to do that. And a year goes by and, and you're like, oh my God, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I haven't done it. And then you do it and you're like, I can't believe I procrastinated for so long. It only took me 20 minutes. It only took me 30 minutes to do. Or it only took me two hours and I thought it was going to take the whole day. And it only took two hours out of your 24 hours it only took two hours and you thought it was going to take the whole day right time is not linear the idea of time is linear time is deep time is eternal so what i mean by this is that if you have resources you can get away with i don't know like if it's just you if it's just you and you have to call on a gallery to try to get a, a, an exhibit let's say that you you're gonna you're gonna call a gallery outside your city to try to get an exhibit if it's just you, the call might take you, I don't know what, 10, 15 minutes at most, at most, if the person's generous and gives you 15 minutes, the curator or whatever, the museum, the gallery curator, uh, mom and pop owner, whatever. It, it, it might take you 10, 15 minutes, right? That's what the call will take you. But if you have to do 100 calls, now you have a time problem, right? But if you get yourself two or three of you, you see... The time just crunches. If you get yourself 10 of you, the time crunches. If you cut the BS, if you cut the biases, all the stuff that I'm going to watch a show, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette, I'm going to have to go drink. If you cut all the BS that doesn't serve in your life, that doesn't really serve in your life, then you add it another 15 minutes. You add it another 20 minutes. You add, you continue to add because it's, 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 time is eternal, right? The, the true idea of time is that it's time is, it's a made, it's a man-made um, concept. Time is a man-made concept. We say, oh my God, 20 minutes to get from here to there. Yeah, if you're walking, if you're, I don't know, if you're running, it's different. If you're driving, it's different. If you fly there, it's different. If you bring the event here, it's different, right? You have to think outside the box. You have to think outside of it. How's it going? Uh, my God, I forgot. Is it is it Katie? Is it? I forgot. Is it Katie? Katie girl. I hope I got the. <laughs> I hope I got the name right. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to talk to you guys about. Look, expand, expand. Find ways to expand. For example, I do this video, right? My son right now is at the guitar center learning how to play guitar and he's he's got two classes. Cat T girl. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> uh he's in the guitar center right now learning how to play guitar and drums. I told my wife, I'll do it cuz the, the here's another thing if, if you want things to get done, give it to the busiest person. Always give it to the busiest person. It, you you got to get yourself so busy I <laughs> play ukulele. That's awesome. You gotta get so busy that all of a sudden you, it's almost like you become you, you you start vibrating at a different speed. So my son's doing that right now, and uh, and I'm like, okay, what well, what can I do right now to utilize my time? Boom! I got an hour. Right? That's what I told myself. I got an hour because he's there for an hour, thirty minutes on each instrument. What can I do? I'm gonna go record a bit. Look at this handsome hair i'm going to record a video okay now i'm just not talking to myself i'm talking to i don't know five six of you 
And later on, it's going to be more because more people going to the it turns into hundreds of people going into the Instagram uh, story. Right. That's a form of cloning myself. Now I clone myself. Now, what do I do with this video? Well, I can put it on YouTube right later on. Clone myself even even more. What, what else can I do with the content? Well, I can write a blog. Boom. What else can I do? I can take that blog, right? Because the blog is what? Like, I don't know, three sentences. <laughs> I can write an article and I can go deep into it in an article and put it on LinkedIn. By the way, I write articles and I, and I, and I, and I show them on LinkedIn, right? I share them on LinkedIn. I can do that. What else can I do? I can, I can make a snip, a small video of this and show it and, and, and put it on, on, on Twitter. What else can I do? I can, you know what I mean? Like you get, you get this. I can make a PDF about it. I can, and I can share it. I can, I can put it on, on Pinterest. I can, I can put it uh, on, on, I'm, I'm writing a book. I can put it on my book and on and on and on. All you're doing is layering it. Now, if you're doing it yourself, of course, it's going to feel difficult. Of course it is. But it's not if you start removing all of the perfectionism. And I talk about this extensively in other videos. Start removing all the perfectionism. It's the perfectionism that doesn't let us move forward, really. The perfectionism is the problem. We, 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 we become creatures of perfectionism. Layers like a, layering like a huge cake, totally. It's about stacking, really. You know, you have half an hour to do something and then you stack and then you stack and then you stack. Before you know it, you have three hours that are so busy, so compacted that this is how so many people get so much done. That Again, I'm talking about in the beginning, this is what you got to do. Now, later on, as income starts coming in, okay, you want to continue to act this way, but in more important endeavors. Now you have to start moving certain things. Like I don't want to write my own article at some point. I want to get someone, I don't know, a college student to write my articles. By the way, I have done that. I want to, go, I, I want to get an intern to write my articles and to, and to spend the time posting them online. And to maybe use one of those uh, uh, generators like uh, Hootsuite, right? To shoot content out and to let people know about my message and what I'm about and what I talk about and on and on. And maybe possibly some of those people are like, let me see what this guy's about. Let me see. Oh, he's an artist. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe some of those people go into my art store and possibly buy something or tell someone about what I do who wants to buy something. And that's how and that's how this thing is done, right? That's how this game is done. It's it all works the same way. Everything is the same way. Uh, whether you're a musician or you're an artist, you're a painter or whatever type of artist you are, it's all the same thing. It's, it's, uh, we're, we only have one problem, guys. Every, every person that has an idea, every artist, we only have one problem. There's only one problem, always. And the problem is obscurity. I learned this from a mentor. The only problem you have is obscurity. You don't, you don't, it's not, you don't have a skill problem. You don't have a, 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 a challenge, right? There is no, there's no real challenge in, in, uh, being an entrepreneur. The only challenge is that, is that you have a, a lack of people knowing you. There's a lack of people. If, and I've heard people say, well, if your stuff sucks, and a million people see it, it still sucks. It's not true, guys. That's not even true at all. It, 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 it can't be true. Just think about it like this. Imagine if Britney Spears, all of a sudden, uh, by the way, she did that, no? She, she paints something for, for, I don't know, for some nice place or whatever uh, to, to give the funds to a, to a charity or whatever. Uh, Britney Spears is going to sell a painting much more expensive than I can sell a painting. It doesn't matter how much more I know about painting than her. Is it fair? Uh, it, to the market, it is. To me, it's not. Like I'm going to be like, oh my God, that's not fair. I'm going to cry like most artists cry about that. It, but the marketplace is the marketplace is the marketplace. The market is fair. Okay? It has nothing to do with with the universe or me or what I think it's fair or what you and I think it's fair. It's what the market thinks it's, it's fair. And that's the bottom line. Laura says, uh, can you repeat the generator info? Haven't heard about the before content generator. Yeah, it's not a content generator. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, what do they call them? 
Well, essentially what it does is that you, you, you put your content, like your articles, your videos or whatever, you organize them and it shoots them at different times of the day. Okay. It's called Hootsuite. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, I believe. It's worth a Google. <laughs> uh, there's, there's many of them. Uh, there's many of them, but essentially what it does is that it, you can organize your content and, and make it, make it shoot it out at different points to different social media platforms. Okay. And this now you essentially, you only have to do this maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, you know, whatever, 10 minutes a day. You only do that and you don't have to be posting them all the time. Now, what I recommend is doing that and still do posts from time to time throughout the day. Do videos like this, you know. Hootsuite, totally. Cat uh, says, for me, as long as I think my art is unique, then price doesn't matter. Totally. Yeah, no, for, for personally, art is, is, is your thing, right? It's, it's mom, dad, you love your art. But the marketplace, it has a different idea of it. And and if you want to be a full time artist, you have to you have to understand the marketplace. For example, there 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 is the market pays what the market pays for my artwork. If I was a Picasso, then the market would place would pay differently. It doesn't matter whether the art is good or not. It doesn't matter whether Mr. Picasso painted on a napkin and I painted on a on a thousand dollar canvas, and and I spent three years making a single painting and he spent one minute making it. His painting will still go for millions of dollars as opposed to one painting by me that may, may go for a couple of thousand dollars. Right? The market, the market knows Picasso. The market does not know me. That's why I say the only problem is obscurity. That people don't know you. That's the only problem everybody has. Uh, Painted Sage Studio says, starting out, how do you price your work? I've read some are like x amount per square inch, 50 cents, one dollar, whatever. Yeah, that's a that's like a standard. Uh, I don't do that personally. The standard for that is because galleries don't want to make it difficult. So they want to keep a uniform. As galleries take in, in work, they want to say like, okay, let's not get confused by price points. That way we don't confuse buyers. And we just say $1 per square inch. And it helps them with their math. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go with that one. Uh, when I start pricing my work, I price it at what has what the market has responded to in the beginning. So for example, I started auctioning work and they started realizing what people were willing to pay. So what I started doing is that I painted something uh, slightly bigger because I started auctioning some smaller pieces and I painted something slightly bigger and then I, I, I priced it, right? Three, four, five times that. And then I realized that the market uh, bought it, right? The market was like, we agree with it. And then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. The market agrees to you. So if, if, if you play, by the way, many of us place, uh, the price of our artwork is very low. Okay, I just want to say that it's not high. Uh, I counter believe a lot of artists think that we, we price our artwork very high. That's not true. Most artists uh, price their artwork very low, very, very low. Because again, it's, it's the, the market will respect you uh, for what it knows about you. It's not the artwork. Now, some people will buy for the artwork, right? But as time goes by, you will notice that the market will start respecting you for, for the respecting your price for how much impact you have in the marketplace. Now, because of the artwork itself, now you have two things going for you. You have impact in the marketplace and you have masterful skills. Yeah, You have a master skill level. Doesn't matter whether you create abstract art or hyper realistic art, you've you've come to a master skill level. And the market will start responding accordingly. Uh got it. Thank you. Feels high, but yeah, has been underpriced, etc. Yeah, when what I would do when you start out, personally, what I would do is get the artwork in the hands of the market. Um, as much as you can and 
and don't have different products. See, this is the problem that many artists only have one price point. Like we're like, okay, my artwork is a thousand bucks each or 10,000 bucks each or whatever, right? There's only one price point. And I don't think that that, that only works for a handful of artists and especially the gallery, the big gallery artists. For the rest of us who are, have to behave more like small businesses, uh, you, you want to have different price points. So one of the things that I did, and I'm sharing with you guys this strategy, is that I had artwork that I essentially had at very low price points, sort of door swingers, sort of to let people have them, to let people go in and experience it. And you can do this in different ways. You can do small, small little paintings, small little watercolors. Now, most artists try to do this with prints. I wouldn't do it with prints because with prints, you need a lot of audience for prints to be respected. Most prints are not respected. Most artists that sell prints, uh, prints are not even really respected because, because you need a lot of audience, right? A lot of people. When you're starting out, you don't have a lot of people. When I mean a lot of people, I mean like if you have 100,000 followers on Instagram, organic followers on Instagram, uh, then putting prints, it's probably a good thing. It's probably a, 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 a very good part of your business. But if you if you have only like 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 followers on Instagram and you start putting prints, it might not be the thing to do. It just might not be the thing to do. What I would rather do, which is something that I do often, is that I'll do little watercolors or I'll do little sketches. And, and I make them extremely accessible because they're, they are accessible, right? They are accessible. Now, if, you, if it takes you a whole day to do one, a drawing, then maybe you need to change the, 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 the strategy. But if it takes you only a few seconds, it takes you... Uh, uh, because it's, it's your skill level. Like, I remember doing a painting not long ago. It took me five minutes to do a painting, an oil painting. And this lady told me the same thing that, that someone told Picasso a long time ago. Uh, why is it so much if it only took you five minutes? I'm like, no, lady, it took me 20 years to learn how to do it in five minutes. That's, that's really the answer. You know, I didn't start today. I started 20 years ago. It took me 20 years to learn, to learn how to create artwork at this, at this level. How to create artwork with this authority, with this level of authority, with this understanding of color, composition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It took me a long time. I went through a lot, right? Uh, so, so that's really what you start to to uh, place your artwork at. Painted, painted uh, Sage Studios. Is, I love working large, but having working on changing to small and watercolors, etc. Learning a lot from you. Totally. Uh, don't stop painting large, though. Okay, this is another. This is another. It can be a mistake that a lot of artists do, where we go one way or another. Don't go one way or another. For example, I'm going to give you an example. I have paintings. This little two by twos, three by, I'm sorry, not two by twos, three by three inches watercolors, okay? I learned this from, uh, what's his name? What's this guy's name? Uh, the guy that used to paint in the 60s, uh, he, he did the Beatles album cover. What's his name? Anyways, I forgot his name. Uh, he carries these things around and he draws and then he, he hands them to, to collectors or, or potential collectors. Uh, he, give, he hands them out and they're worth a good penny, you know, and he hands them out freely because he knows he's expanding himself. He's not contracting. Now, he's not carrying around big paintings and just handing them and giving them away. He's not doing that. But he gives us little drawings. They're, they're color, like little watercolors or little. And I got that from him. I was like, man, that's a great strategy. So I started doing that. Now I carry them around. I don't have some with me, or do I? Let me see if I have some with me. I started doing the same thing. So I carry these things around. And, and when someone asks me about my artwork or is really interested, I think I'm out of them. Uh, I give one away to the person. And this helps me. It just creates. Oh, I don't know if I, I think I'm out of them. Uh, it creates it creates a good vibe. You know, it, it creates like people are like, oh, man, I can't believe like you gave me this for free. Of course I did. Right. I want you to have something. I want you to have. I want you to remember me by something. And I still. I do anything between this little, 
three by three inches watercolors, little drawings. I carry little drawings too. I create little sketches, charcoal sketches, pencil lead sketches. And anywhere between, anywhere between that and seven, eight, ten foot paintings and everything in between. Yep, staying with all sizes but working uh, smaller has been a big switch to add to a wider availability. Totally, totally. Yeah, if you if you if you only if you only uh, just work small or work large, it 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 it's you miss out. It, I think of it as a as a as a grocery store, right? You go in there and they have they have anything between uh, I don't know a tomato. Uh, candy bar, all the way up to, you know, uh, I don't know, gallons of milk, boxes of this. Some of some even have a, a garden furniture. The smarter ones, right, have bigger stuff. They have the, the smarter grocery stores or, or, or you know, uh, think of it like Target. You know, you go into Target, they even have groceries. They have wine bottles. They have your garden furniture. They have clothing. They, it, this is the way of the new artist. I believe that if you're an artist and you're not acting this way, you're missing out. Now, this, this doesn't work for everybody, and I do understand, right? Not everybody. Some people are just portrait artists, and that's where they want to stay. And, you know, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. But if you're going to do something like that, then what I recommend is go wide on your content. Have a blog. Have a YouTube channel. Have a... Uh, uh, write articles for the local media. I don't know. Uh, whatever, but go large. Go out, Go wide expand i know i made this video way long but i just wanted to remind you guys look i'm going through this myself where i'm i'm understanding oh man i've been missing this whole thing like i've been trying to keep it rather than to expand it and whatever you keep sooner or later starts drying guys if you have a if you have a bucket of water it doesn't matter how large it is if you don't continue to pour in more water right you're going to use it up because you're using it for whatever. Maybe you have a garden. Maybe you drink. Maybe you have animals. Whatever. You're going to use it up. You need to continue. It has to be ever flow. Or is that, is that the word? Evergreen. Ever flow. I don't know. You have to continue to put more in there. It has to continue to get wider and wider. And that's why I'm always thinking about what's the new, what's the new thing? What's the new platform? Is it Musical.ly? Music.ly? Uh, which one is it? Not because, oh my God, I'm going to go, I'm going to go do that. No, it's because, it's because I understand that I just need to add to my roster. Just like when you need, you meet a new person, you don't go, oh, I already have enough people buying from me. No, you, 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 you exchange information and you add them to your mailing list or you add them to your, to your whatever, right? To your reminder list or you add them to your Facebook page. You add, you add, you continue to add. It always, it has to be a drip, always. Painted Sage uh, Studio says, yep, staying with all sizes but working. Oh, yeah. I read this one already. <laughs> I, I got confused. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I'll leave you with that. My name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. By the way, this is who I am. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe God chose me. Who knows? Maybe maybe the gods chose me. But this is, uh, this is my thing, right? I'm an artist. Uh, I call myself the world's greatest living artist just because it fits right. You know, it feels good. It feels, feels, I feel the part. And, uh, and I'm coming to you every day with different, different things that I've learned. Now, I don't know everything. I'm not an authority on everything. Of course not, nor I pretend to be. But I'm learning stuff as I'm going, you know. Uh, I'm learning certain things as I'm going, and, and, and this helps my career. It helps my career. It helps me understand my gig. And I'm thinking, man, what if I record it to continue to foster this inside of me, right? To, to, to really soak it in as well as help others out there. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe you, 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 you listen to this stuff and you're like, oh man, I get it. I get it. You know, I get what this guy's talking about. I'm going to implement that also in my business or I'm going to implement that in my creation of art. I talk about different stuff. I have over a thousand videos on YouTube, by the way, free, right? YouTube. That you can watch if you want to binge watch that instead of, I don't know, uh, whatever shows is on Netflix right now. 
you probably do yourself a, 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 a you know a, a huge service. I, I talk anywhere from partnerships, working with your partner to expanding in the marketplace, to creating art, to the Zen of art. I do talk about that. I I, I talk about keeping a, a, this right, the mental space right, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Laura says, thanks so much. I discovered you a few weeks ago. I'm already learning so much from you. Love your no BS approach. Thank you. I appreciate that. I want to be known as that. I want to be known as the guy who just doesn't have a, a nothing filter. You know, it's just... It's just no BS and it's, it is what it is. Take it or leave it. This is what I've learned. It might not work for you. It might work for you. I don't know. Uh, I'm getting older, guys. I'm not... I, I, I recognize the time thing. I, I just recently turned 36. A lot of people say, you're so young. You're so young. I am young, but at the same time, I recognize that, again, what do we have? We have two, two resources, right? Time or income right time is, is is with energy so if we don't use it right uh i, I just don't want to procrastinate anymore you know so that's why i cut the bs i don't want to procrastinate nor i want you to waste your time either so thank you so much take care adios guys